Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night, 9.50 p.m. That's California time here. Thursday, February 27, 2025 is the date. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a uh, 3.0 here across the... Um, where are we? Should be out here somewhere in the green flag. There we go. South America area. I'm going to start off first here up in the uh, Seattle, Washington region. Uh, earlier this morning, a handful of smaller quakes over here along the western side of the Seattle Fault. Right after my update video this morning, we've seen uh, some further activity on the eastern side here of the Seattle Fault. 3.3 um, earlier this afternoon. So that brings up a total tally here within the region of the Seattle Fault. Uh, up to about seven earthquakes. The largest, a 3.3. Now this area can uh, have a, a pretty large earthquake. The Seattle Fault in proximity far as location goes is more hazardous for Seattle than the Cascadia subduction zone that sits at a distance offshore here from Washington. Uh, even though the Cascadia can produce a much larger quake than the Seattle Fault, which is uh, expected around 7.0 to 7.5, uh, this would be uh, much more hazardous and dangerous for the Seattle folks there. If that thing were to rupture, it uh, looks like a, within the last, uh, about a thousand years ago or so, is the last big earthquake. I looked it up a little bit um, here in the Seattle area. Uh, I guess there's two different types of earthquakes that the Seattle Fault can generate. Uh, both of those pose considerable hazard to the Seattle metropolitan region. Uh, the AD 900 and 930 earthquake is believed to be the only instance in the past 7,000 years of the type that causes a regional uplift uh, in terms of a, you know, like a subduction zone type thrust quake. Uh, the other type is more localized and shallower and therefore, of course, more damaging, right? At least four such events are believed to have occurred in the past 3,000 years. The history of the central and eastern segments are not known. But if you think about that, there, there was uh, at least four events in the last 3,000 years with the last one there uh, just about, a th what is it, over 1,000 years ago. So that's uh, rather interesting. It looks like 1,100 years ago between these dates right here uh, that caused a, uh, an earthquake of magnitude 7 or greater on the Seattle Fault. Now, that's a, obviously a little concerning, right? If you think about there's been four of them in the last th uh, 3,000 years, the intervals here sh could be getting close. You know, it, hard to uh, decipher on, you know, that that far back of a time frame uh, in terms of maybe, you know, figuring out an interval level. But, hey, that fault system up there can see some big earthquakes. And uh, if the last one was 1,000 a thousand years ago, 1,100 years ago, hey, I want to watch that. So historical data out here, this is just localized to the Seattle area and only from the USGS. They're not going to show that earthquake that struck back in 920 or 923. Um, but this is just historical data, recent data uh, with the largest event out here on the Seattle. Now there's other fault systems around the Seattle area, south and north, but the Seattle fault specifically here um, looks like a 4.9 back in 1997, 13 kilometers deep there for that quake. Over here on the eastern side of 4.5, 1963. A little bit further off the fault system of 5-pointer in 1891. So obviously, um, you know, no recent big earthquake activity on the Seattle Fault. Further out and about, there's been some, you know, deeper ones and, and larger, but not associated here with the Seattle Fault. Uh, so it is interesting to watch this little uh, swarm, so to speak, here on the western side and over here off the eastern side. So we do know that this region is quite strained with this type of event here in the last, you know, 24 hours. Over the last seven days, scattered activity up in north. Uh, last 30 days brings in a little bit more earthquake activity. Um, and if you look, there's a, a little pattern here of uh, directional movement, migration, if you will, up to today's earthquake. A little bit over here across the Seattle Fault to the west as well. Um, so it's not a whole lot in the central section, though. But, uh, you know, who's to say that that's not uh, where it could rupture here across the center area? And that, that'd be underneath Seattle, directly underneath. So that's uh, something to watch here with this uh, 
elevated earthquake event. You know, similar to, and these are just earthquakes that have happened, and they will happen again. We've been living in some uh, decent times, right, in terms of, for us here in the States anyway, quiet geology periods. But uh, it's not always going to be like that. You know, similar down to uh, the Los Angeles Puente Hills Rest Fault, which uh, sits, it goes underneath downtown Los Angeles there. And um, they had a 7.5 earthquake, uh, what was it, uh, about three or 4,000 years ago, I think. And the regular intervals run about three to 4,000 years. Uh, and they can tell by sediments and whatnot uh, as they dig through the deeper layers. Uh, so that's another area that could produce a 7.5 underneath Los Angeles. And similar to Seattle, a 7.5 here across Los Angeles would be more damaging locally than, say, an 8.1 there across the San Andreas Fault. So two different regions, you know, kind of similar scenarios there. And a lot of time has passed. Uh, between the last ruptures so we'll continue to keep an eye there on the seattle area some of that's fairly deep as well uh, 14 miles or so 16 miles for some of them the latest one a 1.2 over here across the uh, eastern edge of the seattle fault nothing major going on offshore one earthquake here a surface fracture at the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone that's a three-pointer on that note let's double check the um trimmer map here this evening see what we have uh, 54 epicenters up here underneath this area of oregon that's not associated with any surface fracturing that's uh, slow slip events down way down there into the cascadia subduction zone underneath this area um, that is north of where that earthquake struck this morning uh, but it uh, keep an eye on it we may see them add an earthquake or two overnight or maybe in the morning uh, following these events today not you know it's not too often that when an earthquake occurs out here across oregon or, or the coast um, they don't immediately report it it gets reported after the fact after someone looks at it but uh, i wouldn't doubt if there's a couple more smaller quakes added to the oregon area following this trimmer event nothing going on there across northern california as far as trimmer goes uh, but a couple earthquakes throughout the afternoon 2.9 up to a 2.5, the latest quake there. Uh, some smaller earthquake activity outside of my neck of the woods here, right around the Hamilton City area. 2.2, nine miles deep. Just uh, periodically we get these earthquakes out here around the uh, western side of Butte County, right along the Sacramento River. I don't know, it may have something to do with the, the amount of pressure that's uh, out there in the Sacramento River. They're releasing a, water, a lot of water, and of course we've had, um, you know, some steady rains here recently, making that Sacramento River run quite high. So the water weight could have something to do with that, potentially. Uh, Clear Lake Volcanic Field, very typical out there in the geothermal fields, right? They got the satellite map working out here. We can zoom in here and see what's going on. Very close to one geothermal plant. There's one right here couple out and about maybe this hard to tell this looks like a newer one maybe in process of being built uh, either way earthquake activity happening out there in the geothermal fields of clear lake uh, bay area pretty quiet aside from a couple smaller quakes down there uh, southern california looking a little quiet for earthquake activity one 2.6 outside of little lake earlier but uh, generally small microquake activity out here today Nothing big happening yet. Yellowstone National Park, nothing shown up there on the map. <coughs> Excuse me. Texas oil fields still get hit and hammered with earthquake activity. Uh, let's take a look here at the last 24 hours of earthquake movement. Largest going to be a 5.5 here. A pretty shallow earthquake outside of Nepal. I uh, think that's the area, well, west of the area where that seven-pointer struck here, right? Let me check back the last couple days. That's uh, roughly within the same area. This is aftershock sequences there, uh, north of um, of Mount Everest out there. Got uh, interesting earthquake there, 5.5. So, well, the thing is, when things take place out here, adjustment will 
happen accordingly. And um, no big earthquake activity, but it's expected to see some strain in or around the area that had that larger event uh, some weeks back out there. Uh, Alaska up here got a little movement happening. Uh, last earthquake of, well, that's the largest. It's pretty deep, about 81 miles deep there into the subduction zone. That was followed up here by a, a shallower earthquake a few hours later. Deeper movement, adjusting the areas upstream around the Aleutian Trench. Keep an eye on that area specifically when things act, when things start acting like that, that could be a sign that we could be seeing some larger activity there. Japan, pretty quiet. Uh, down across New Zealand area, nothing showing up here on the globe, mainly north into the Kermadec Trench and uh, the Tonga Trench there. A couple earthquakes. So just going to keep an eye on things. Puerto Rico area is still quite active and down south here as well. Uh, this area of the Caribbean plate's been squeezed here recently including that 7.6 earthquake the result of the squeezing um, here a number of days back or a number of weeks back now right was that 7.6 so far the largest earthquake this year no eight pointer yet but uh, a lot going on out here across puerto rico some squeezing going on even some activity further south here along that plate boundary the subduction zone uh, probably around St. George's area or the Port of Spain. Uh, let's see, a bunch of movement down south here. Got uh, some fracture boundaries. That's going to be this area down here across the uh, South America region. Well south of South America, here's the Scotia Plate. Subduction zone there of the South Sandwich Trench, right? And some activity stirring up here. There's, uh, I think these are some spreading seafloor centers. But the general pattern here of the plates, as you can see, pointing all up north. And, of course, the Caribbean plate up here getting the squeeze put on it uh, by everything that's happening around it. Ethiopia rift boundary, a little earthquake activity there this morning, a 4.7. Far as the Santorini, Greece area, well, let's um, let's take a look, see what we have here. Oh, what's this? What did I do? Oh, there we go. <laughs> My mistake. Um, 560 or 558 epicenters here of earthquake activity in the last week around the Santorini area. Still got uh, some movement going on there. Nothing big happening, just some ones and twos. It looks like the last one five minutes ago in that cluster. Just kind of still spread out all over the place. Just uh, it's continuing, so to speak, here. Just a matter of time, I think, before this either dies out completely or we see this maybe ramp back up. All I know is these events take some time here. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that uh, that activity. Uh, let's see what else is there. Some space weather events. Oh. Uh, let's see, nothing major happening here on the sun right now. Uh, earlier today we had a, a beautiful prominence eruption. Um, not even noted on the solar ham site, but that kicked off here on this uh, northeastern limb of the sun. Not earth directed. We're left with literally a, uh, a pretty empty sun in terms of sunspots. Look at that. We'll be lucky if we even see a sea flare event from any of this activity. This area is just about off the off the visible disk here. And once that happens, well, we got uh, some quiet times going on here. Really can't see what else is out there on the eastern limb. There's a little bit of flaring going on, but nothing big. Uh, let's check out the far side watch here real quick. See what we got. This is put out yesterday, but it's still somewhat recent. Earth facing side, western limb eastern limb back over here so these uh, sunspots are moving in this general fashion 
this eastern limb here connects with this side just on a flat scale model uh, so we do have um, well I mean not a whole lot a lot of big ones out here 3990 I believe is this region that uh, uh, blew up drastically and and uh, kicked off some large flares including that proton event we dealt with recently uh, that's out there on the far side of the Sun um, yeah, so I don't really see anything major coming up. There's a couple different sunspots here, but I think we may be entering into a little quiet period. A little bit of aurora conditions here last night and throughout the day and maybe tonight as well. Uh, KP index up around 5, it looks like, just due to some uh, high-speed solar wind stream that has been flowing from these coronal holes back a couple days ago when they were facing Earth. These uh, three dark spots there. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center. For severe weather, it looks like there's a, uh, what is it, day six? Yeah, day six. That's a little odd to see a 30% chance for severe weather that far out. Uh, so this could be something. Um, obviously, it is something that the uh, Storm Prediction Center folks there are watching closely. It is that time of year here where things can get uh, quite uh, brutal down there across the south and Texas area, severe weather-wise. Uh, so that is going to be on Tuesday, uh, the 4th of March. So we'll watch that pretty closely. Uh, we'll look at the weather models here and see what we got around the 4th time period. Um, right, right about there. So there's going to be associated with a massive low pressure center. Looks like up eastern um, Kansas area. Pulling up that moisture, creating the uh, convection there. And, of course, you get those thunderstorms popping up that can uh, rotate. There's a nice little feature there that we see in severe weather in terms of tornado activity. Uh, these That general pattern right there is kind of looking like that may be something. So we'll watch that closely there as we head into uh, early mid-week on the uh, 4th of March. Uh, Southern California, a little bit of rain coming. Let's see. Let me bring it back a little bit here. Rain Sunday, it looks like, for the majority of California. Some colder systems, it looks like. And then uh, some rain for Southern California there as we head to, towards the end of the week. After that, uh, some more wet weather for the West Coast. So that is good. Looking at the uh, precipitation, the total accumulated map here including all the model runs well california nice and wet a little rain shadow i hate that i do not like that at all but that's what i get for living here in the valley uh, hopefully that changes uh, but there you go um, there's a focus here moisture across the uh, midwest area with the severe weather and uh, along the west coast quite a bit of rain coming in one earthquake here off the san francisco region 2.0 that is on the San Andreas Fault, it looks like, or just close by. Uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on things here, folks. I need to see if I can get me a uh, Seattle Fault um, seismograph station up. There's a little earthquake here on China Lake. Nothing big, but overall, seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for the most part. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Include Yellowstone. Uh, but keep an eye up here on in the uh, Seattle area. It definitely looks quite strained when you see both sides of the uh, the area look like that. So just be on guard, folks. Seattle, you know, it's huge populated area, and um, that's scary to have a Seattle have a fault like that go directly underneath a major city like that. That's uh, not good. But who knows, folks, you know, it's just good to be prepared. Make sure you have an earthquake plan out there. Earthquake preparedness is a big deal uh, anywhere out here where uh, big earthquakes can take place. All right, I'm out of here, folks. Have a good night. Get yourself some sleep. I'm getting me some sleep here, hopefully. And um, tomorrow is Friday. So have a good night. And we'll see you guys back out here for the Friday morning update.